<coughs> Excuse me. Hello, everyone. I don't know how, how this is going to come out. I'm making this outside of Starbucks here in Forest Hill, Texas. My name is Tracy Gibbons. I'm an electronic harassment target living here in Fort Worth, Texas. The perpetrators. Well, first, let's cover electronic harassment. Electronic harassment is not your normal harassment. All right? It's not uh, monitoring your phone or your computer, although that is part of it. It's not just stalking you around as normal surveillance is, because it is surveillance. Electronic harassment does encompass surveillance. After all, how could they try to drive you insane if they didn't know what you were doing? So it encompasses stalking both inter and intra, which means stalking you around your local unit, your local uh, area, I should say. Plus, if you travel, like I travel a lot driving a truck, they'll follow you into other states. And uh, it's the same group of people, all that stuff. But it's, it's more than just uh, monitoring your phone, your mail, your emails. It's not just uh, putting hidden microphones and cameras in your home, although they do this. They do this to a lot of targets like myself. No, electronic harassment as a whole with this surveillance, is electronic surveillance, turns the target, like myself, into a walking, talking piece of surveillance equipment. They have the ability to see through my eyes in real time, hear through my ears, everything that's said. And this was for top-level diplomats traveling abroad. Of course, uh, our government diplomats, they would be informed of this and their staff would sign waivers saying that they understood they were under surveillance while they were in this person's presence. And that was a great tool back in the day. You know, a uh, great tool. But electronic harassment, what happens is they tell a lie and they get you under some type of surveillance. I was supposed to be a drug dealer and a murderer. That's what put them on, what excuse they're, they're telling to say they put me under this type of surveillance. The highest level of surveillance the United States government knows. All right? Even if I was dealing drugs, even if I did kill 10 people, 20 people, that does not warrant putting me under this. All right? I do not fall within the category. But yet, I'm placed under this surveillance by the United States government. Her members in it. And these members in it have just happened to uh, bypass all the laws. You probably heard that. That's one of my idiots from down in the neighborhood. Here's your car right here. License plate number is Victor 61 X ray Mary Thomas. You might have heard him go in. Anyway, I'm just a few miles from my house doing this. But what else encompasses it? They, they tell a lie. They put you on this surveillance. All right. Highest level of surveillance there is. Nobody has access to it in the local law enforcement to find out. Apparently. They just take their word because they're from the office of the president. Like Christopher Doss. D-O-S-S. -S, like dog. Now Christopher Doss is the head of the science and technology special applications or special uh, special technologies and applications special technologies and applications office of the president Christopher Doss okay well this surveillance also for the top level diplomats like I said they it hears through their ears sees through their eyes. It also has the ability to speak to them. And that's what it was for. Uh, if danger was approaching a top-level diplomat, they could just speak into a microphone like I'm doing, and he would hear it in his head. It's called microwave hearing. It's also called synthetic telepathy or voice to skull. But this would give 
you know, uh, the diplomat an idea of what's going on, which way he needs to, you know, exit the room. Uh, an example, you know, say something's going bad and, you know, they got this guy under surveillance, one of our diplomats. And they'd simply, we're just going to use George here, right? They would simply just say, you know, George or Mr. George, you know, you need to depart the room through the door on your left as soon as possible. And he would hear this. They'd be talking in a meeting. Nobody else would hear it. And he'd excuse himself to go to the restroom or get a drink or whatever. And he'd go through that door while whatever's going to happen happens. That was the use of this. That was the purpose of this. Top-level diplomats traveling abroad and high security risk to this nation. Terrorists, shit like that. You know, of course, they wouldn't tell them, but that's what it's about. But these guys, over the years, the Doss family and a few other families, like Strickland, have got this equipment. And they've been selling it to their drug dealing friends and stuff like that. Of course, now we got this equipment loose on the street. Nobody can check the names on that. Nobody even bothers because they, they try to say that you're crazy, you're insane, you, you're hearing voices, you must be crazy. Man, there are 200 government documents that talk all about the technology, how the Air Force came up against it, how it was first discovered by a radar operator back in the 60s, could hear the, the sound of his radar in his head, etc., etc., how the government uh, jumped on that and, you know, just went crazy. Let's do it. Well, we all know how the government is. I mean, you know, what they do. Well, electronic harassment is electronic surveillance of this highest nature coupled with perverts at the other end using microphones. I'm looking at this computer and they try to drive you crazy. They try to piss you off to where you look crazy, to where you kill one of them. But the ones out here on the street doing this are police officers, sheriff's deputies, and their family members. Why? Because, you know, it's unlikely somebody would take this equipment from a cop. It's unlikely that if you beat a cop's ass and take this equipment that you're going to get to keep it. And if they're traveling around with it and another police officer stops them, they simply show their badge and tell some BS and it's all forgotten. Nobody thinks anything about it. So it's very hard to get anybody to pay attention when you try to tell them what's going on. That was in the past. It's not so hard now. I don't have a problem. Anyway, I just wanted to touch on that right fast. There's going to be more right here. Electronic harassment is dangerous to the target. It's dangerous to the operators. It's dangerous to the general public. To make it worse, the ones operating it here in the Fort Worth, Texas area have been doing so for over 45 years. That gives you an idea of who the family is right there. How many people have had access to this type of surveillance equipment for 45 years? What was the name? Check it out yourselves, all you government employees working, watching this. You have access. Look it up. Then look up who lives in my area, Fort Worth, Texas, Dallas area. Self-explanatory, y'all. Either way, these people are going to be locked up or something really bad is going to happen like, well, one of us targets, probably myself, is going to say enough is enough and put a hole in her head right out in the street in front of God and everybody. Then you're going to get to draw lines around them. So the government's going to get involved. One way or the other. That's the bottom line. That's just reality, folks. Thanks for watching. Pay attention to some more. Y'all have a great day.